Hi everyone, welcome to the first webinar in BAMP's new series, COVID-19 Perspectives. Every Thursday, I'll be joined by two guests who will be talking about their experience of working through lockdown. From marketing to influencers to people and culture and leadership, we'll be looking at different points of view and bringing you some great actionable advice. So we're kicking off today with our social media marketing webinar, and I'm joined by Caitlin O'Malley, who is the Associate Director of Social Content at Spark Foundry. Caitlin has 10 years of experience in working in digital, creative and marketing agencies, working with clients like KFC, 20th Century Fox and Coca-Cola. And we're also joined by our own Gemma Shuttleworth, who is the Director of Client Partnerships at BAM. Gemma consults and provides campaign solutions for clients across a range of categories. Welcome to you both. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Great to see you both. Not just because I've had no social interaction and this is the <laughs> socialising I've done in a while. Um, so just a reminder to everyone watching, if you'd like to ask any questions, um, then please do so. There's a box at the bottom here so you can um, type in your question and we'll get to it afterwards if we have time. Okay, so now both before we kick off, I know that we're all working from home at the moment, so I wanted to ask you some quick questions uh, just because I'm really nosy and I also want some. <laughs> um, so First of all, Caitlin, tell me, what is your working from home style? Are you keeping it casual? Are you dressing up for Zoom meetings? Super casual. I don't think I've gotten out of track pants or leggings since it started, and I kind of love it. Um, but I try to keep it professional at the top. Okay. And we've clearly both got the memo today. Yeah, we, do. we wore the same outfit today. <laughs> now, what's your working from home soundtrack? Oh, I mean, it's a hard one. I think I can't really commit. So I've been really relying on my Google Mini and just kind of shouting out, demanding different playlists, depending on kind of what I feel like. So I think the current favourites are sort of play chill out music or play upbeat music and just kind of, yeah, seeing what the vibe is. <laughs> mm, love it. Um, and Caitlin, what app or gadget have you realised that you can't live without? Um, Insight Timer. So it's a meditation app and I know everybody's talking about meditation these days, but um, it's really cool because you can actually um, do it by the amount of time you want, the theme and how highly rated it is. And it's been such a help for starting my day. Amazing. I need to check that one out. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get down to business. Let's talk social media marketing. Um, now, I don't want to say unprecedented because I feel like that's probably the most overused world in, word in the world right now. Um, but obviously, no one has experienced this before. So I imagine that your clients are probably looking to both of you for advice at the moment. Um, so what's been the question that you have been asked most frequently by your clients on how to use social media at this time? Um, if they should pause their media or if they need to change their strategy, and look, it's different for every brand, but on the whole, I would say this is not a time to shy away. Um, what they really should be doing is taking a look at their current content and seeing if it's insensitive or if it meets the government regulations. Um, so a really good example of this is KFC. They had their finger licking goods add up. Obviously we're all told to not touch our face. Um, so they were really great and they took those ads down and um, talked to their consumers and said about how they can't dine in, but they can still dine out with KFC. The next step would be um, to really take a look at your brand and your brand values and see how you can bring those to the forefront um, in terms of how they can actually help consumers during this time. So another example of that is Nike. Um, two of their brand values, one is community and the other is social responsibility. They uh, also pivoted their advertising. They put 15 million um, to help COVID relief efforts. And then um, I'm sure a few of you might've seen their latest tagline that was going across social media around playing inside and playing for the world that now is the time that you could play for millions. If, and um, after they launched that, they also announced that their premium app would be available for free. And then on top of that, they utilized their athletes as influencers and showcased how they were doing their at-home workouts um, to stay fit and stay at home as well. So 
it's just an example of how they took a look at their brand values and looked how they could provide aid, reassurance, and empathy in these uncertain times. Yeah, the Nike campaign was was really moving. I liked that um, the ad sort of really showed raw moments of people like working out in their hallways, like trampling in the kitchen, like something I think we can all kind of relate to as we're just trying to like make it work. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting, like we've seen brands like Dettel who have had their hand wash um, sort of flying off the shelves at the moment, continue to activate in order to promote um, correct hand washing techniques. So it's um, in their case, you know, less about selling and more about stepping up to ensure the World Health Organization's guidelines are, are being followed correctly. Um, and it's also pushed brands that have been impacted to sort of expedite certain initiatives that probably would have been um, sort of in the works in the background, um, but really they've had to kind of really expedite those and, and shift their focus towards them. So, I mean, a good example is we've been working with Westfield. Um, we were originally looking at more of a seasonal campaign that was driving customers in centre. Um, but they've actually just launched a click and collect service, which is really amazing. So our influencers are promoting, you know, the opportunity to, to dine at home with the groceries that you bought and to shop online and actually have ballet staff load items directly into the boot of your car. So that's, that's like a really, really great cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't know that that was happening. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's great to be able to, I guess, see brands um, digitalizing their business and kind of moving with the times and then to be able to help them get that message out there, which um, is ultimately going to benefit them in the short term as well as the long term. I was going to say it's dangerous. We've all just been talking about how much online shopping we've been doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Retail therapy. <laughs> okay, so are there any types of content, whether it's sort of like a theme or a format that you've seen performing particularly well with audiences at the moment? Um, yeah, so brands that are showing kind of their authentic and human side and are rising above a self-serving approach. So it's more of that soft sell, not that hard sell. Um, a few examples of this would be how time out turned to time in. So instead of talking about what you can do around your city, they're showcasing what you can do at home and the brands that have pivoted to make products available to you at home. Um, another great example of this is um, different fitness centers that are providing free at home workouts like Bar Body. Um, we also, though this isn't a brand, but I guess a personal brand, um, how the Prime Minister of New Zealand went live on the first night of lockdown um, to the nation in her sweatshirt after putting her child to bed and just showed that she was in it with everyone else and what to expect. And that just showed authentic leadership. Um, and then we're also seeing lots of tutorials from makeup brands. So Benefit has a section on their Instagram that's just devoted to at home um, grooming. And then also I'm seeing lots of museums being able to showcase um, their artwork or exhibits through unique methods, um, even asking um, their fans to dress up like specific pieces of art and share. Um, so it's been really interesting, but I would say like overall it's the brands um, and the content that is supporting the consumer in a meaningful way, be that through education or entertainment. Totally, yeah, there's been some, some quite fun um, things come through for sure. And that's kind of what we're all looking for is that inspiration. So, you know, whether it's genuine advice, like things to do or something that will just sort of brighten our day. So I think the brands that are able to provide value in a, in a relevant and meaningful way that kind of puts their customer ahead of themselves are the ones that will really stand out and have the opportunity to build advocacy during this time. So, I mean, even if customers can't spend with them now, um, they'll have created that connection and, and be remembered for it, which is, which is really great. 100%. I think that idea of building connection at the moment is really important. Um, and I know that you both work with influencers a lot. So how do you think influencers play into all of that at the moment? Well, I think right now it's pretty hard for those of us who are expected to create content to create content by yourself at home if you weren't already prepared for that. Um, so a great way is to use influencers who are already prepared and creating content daily that align with your brand. Um, so you can use them purely for content creation or to talk about specific um, themes that resonate with consumers that you feel like you might not be an authority on or that you can have a close connective match with. Um, and I 
wanted to bring up some potential topics that you could think about based on consumer behavior change that we've seen um, within media reports. And a lot of them you'll say like, well, duh, but just think about how this, these are, we're in a unique time where this is happening to all of us. So a lot of us are looking for similar content. So right now the reports are showing that most people are worried about their finances. Um, there, more people are cooking at home and grocery shopping online. More people are working out at home and they're also looking to be entertained through streaming services um, like movies, TV, um, and podcasts. Podcasts are on the rise. Um, they're spending more time with family and on hobbies. So that's old hobbies or trying to find new hobbies. Um, and they're consuming lots of music. So if you think of those as kind of different content themes that you could look into as a brand and see if there's influencers that could help you develop content and match to bring entertainment or education. Um, that's something that I would take a look at in this time. For sure. I think um, I'm definitely guilty of the finding a million and one new hobbies. I've been baking, <laughs> watercolor painting, yeah. like you name it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, all those themes are, are super relevant, like for our client Reiko, we've been engaging um, mums and family influencers to actually share recipe ins inspiration um, using simple kitchen staple items that you might already have in the cupboard, whilst also kind of keep teaching kids um, valuable skills whilst they're, they're obviously um, stuck inside. So um, that's been quite a cool campaign to work on and an influence that's also a teacher actually integrated a math lesson into her content, which, which was quite that's a so cool. cool. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, as you sort of mentioned, it's that relatability that um, influencers have always been kind of looked to for to sort of instill trust and, and authenticity. Um, as everyday people, um, they're seen more of a friend and, and so brands are able to relate and connect with them through their trusted voice. So uh, during this time, like I think, Caitlin, you've, you've also sort of mentioned it, like we, we really are in this together um, and influencers are facing many of the same challenges to the individuals that are following them. So restricted to their homes, homeschooling, dealing with um, health and financial concerns. Um, I think this coupled with the fact that they're accustomed to creating content, um, you know, their own content remotely and they, and they mm -hmm. have been, it's their bread and butter. Um, mm -hmm. Plus the amount of time that we're spending on social media, um, it just makes them sort of more relevant than ever and a, a channel that um, can provide a lot of value to brands during this time. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always just so amazing to see the content that influencers are able to produce and the quality of it. So seeing what they're able to do at home in lockdown, I think it's just even more mind blowing. Um, okay, so finally, if we were now able to condense all of that information into some actionable advice that marketers can take away today, what would that be? What should brands be doing and what should brands absolutely not be doing at the moment? Um, okay, so first I would reevaluate the content um, that you have live at the moment or that you're planning to go live uh, with a lens of sensitivity to the times. Secondly, um, it's a time to ask yourself, what are your consumers needs at this moment and how can you help them? Um, again, I know that Gemma and I keep harping on about this, but um, it's not about that hard sell. It's about how you can give back at this moment. Um, and then I would also say, like, it is important to be authentic. People, if you're worried about, I can't create the perfect content that I'm used to creating for my brand anymore, that's okay. Perfect isn't resonating right now. So don't be afraid to put something up that isn't as polished as it might have been before. You might actually end up finding that that ends up being your best performing post. I mean, um, we've all had those meetings where, uh, the kids are coming in the background uh, or roommate accidentally pops in. That's just life right now. And I think people want to feel that um, brands understand that too. So it's okay if it's not polished. Um, and then also social is just the perfect place um, to test a new approach. So really to just have a test and learn mentality, you will find out immediately if your consumers are resonating with the new content that you've developed through either the comment section or how the post performs in the back end, but also don't be afraid to ask your consumers what they want to see and how you can help them as a brand. Um, and just be willing to pivot and move the times because it's changing daily. Um, and 
really it's just the perfect place um, for you to, to test ahead of time if you're looking to roll out a larger brand campaign. Completely. I think, you know, it's it's important to assess those plans and, and not hold back from exploring, you know, some potential new avenues and making changes to channels and messages to ensure, you know, the marketing is is really relevant for right now. Um, we're also actually seeing that now is, is a cost effective time to advertise as well. So with 70% of people using their smartphones more, CPM rates on Facebook are actually down 59%, which allows brands to deliver, you know, almost 60% more reach for their budget, which is, is pretty amazing um, opportunity. So, I mean, further to Caitlin's awesome advice, I would just say, you know, uh, reiterate like every brand is different. So um, consider what matters to your consumer, um, lean on your partners and the experts in their fields for sort of tailored recommendations. Um, I know at BAMP, we're working with many of our clients to help them navigate through this time, adapt plans and provide content ideas um, for their brands specifically. So always available for a chat and willing to provide our advice on influencer marketing. So a shout out to, to anyone here watching that would like to discuss sort of their individual brand or client needs. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out because yeah, we're all here to help each other during this time. Amazing. Well, thank you so much both for joining me today and sharing your wisdom. I think we've packed a lot into 15 minutes. Um, so if we were to have a bit of a summary, um, your advice would be this. So to continue to communicate with your customers, but remember to reevaluate what you're doing. And if you need to pivot to cater to your customers evolving needs use influencers to build connections and have a test and learn mentality. Reach out to your customers and find out what's working and use this time to invest in paid media to amplify your message. Is that about right? Did I take? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much ladies and thank you for everyone um, for joining us today I really hope that's been helpful um, I'll be back next week when we'll be looking at all of this through the lens of an influencer to see what their experience of this has been what it's done for their engagement levels and how they've continued to create amazing content at home so hopefully I will see you then thanks a lot bye, bye. bye.